So at this point in the course, we've covered how to use most of the motion features in Studio. There are a few more small things we'll look at, but mainly we'll be focused on fun ways to use what we've already learned. To do that, over the next couple videos, we'll be exploring structural motion. We'll use parallax motion to create a sense of depth, as well as creating some more complex masking animations. For this video though, the main feature we'll be looking at is how to use containers and animation together. If you haven't used containers before or just want a refresher or some additional context, I have a video linked below specifically about using containers in Studio. But before we jump into using containers, let's take a quick look at how scrolling and pinning work. We'll be focusing on the sidebar for this video. We'll look at how we can make it scrollable and how we can collapse and expand each of these categories. So to make it scrollable, first we'll look at our welcome screen and you can see that it's 720 pixels tall and that's the height of our viewport in general. If we select overview though, we can see it's 810 pixels tall. So we'll need to create a way for the sidebar to scroll. The rest of the content will stay static, but we need to be able to see all of the different subscriptions. So right now if I preview this, there's no motion at all if I try to scroll. So I'll go over to scrolling in the sidebar, and you can choose from horizontal, vertical, or both. We don't have any horizontal scrolling in this app, so we'll select vertical. If we preview again, you can see that now we're getting the scrolling, but it's scrolling everything when really we just want the sidebar to scroll. So we'll select the header, and then the pin icon in the top right. We'll do the same with the main content. If we preview again, you can see that the sidebar is the only item that scrolls. The pin icon will basically hold that group in place while letting everything else scroll. So we wanna pin everything that doesn't have any scrolling motion. Now I'll move over to an abstract example to show how we'll be collapsing the sidebar groups. I've set up a basic motion transition on these artboards, and you can see it's just both the rectangle and the square moving up to the top of the screen. What I want to do though is have the white rectangle move to the top of the pink square before the pink square moves. What I'll try first is decreasing the time that it takes the rectangle to move. And you can see that that decreases the time it takes for it to move all the way to the top, not for the time it takes to move within the square. So I'll group both of them in both artboards, select auto link, and then adjust the timeline again. It's still behaving the same way it was before though. So the trick here is to take our group and change it to container. We'll jump back over to the other artboard and change that to container. So now just from that one change, we have the white rectangle moving within the larger group. If I slow it down, you can see it moves all the way to the top of the pink square and then it looks like it's almost pushing the square upward. So if I jump back over to our app, you can see we have both the columns and the individual items. This is the same technique we'll be using to collapse all three of these groups at different times, but only using two artboards. We won't need to use any additional timer features or extra artboards. On our overview page, you can see we have a collapse all button, and that's what we'll be using to collapse all of the items in this sidebar. So I'll copy the overview page and then we'll move all of these items. For these categories that have one item each, we'll resize it. And then we'll move them as well. And then finally, we want the arrows to collapse too to give some feedback as to what happened. I'll go in and put 135 degrees and then they're pointing upwards. I'll go back to overview, press C and create an interaction. I'll bump the delay down to zero and leave duration at 0.7 and then we'll go straight into the timeline and check it out. All of our items are collapsing and our arrows are moving as well. To make this even better though, we can have each of the categories collapse separately. To do that, we'll use a similar strategy to the abstract example we just looked at. 
So I'll take the bottom category and item and rename it bottom. The second one will be middle. And then the final one will be top. And then I'll also take the bottom two categories and call that bottom group. To make sure everything is synced properly, I'll do the same on the first artboard. And then since we know we want to be using containers, we can just make that change right now. So I'll change bottom group to container and I'll change middle and bottom to containers as well. And then I'll do that on the other artboard and then we're ready to jump into the timeline. Now that we've set these all as container, we'll move back into the timeline and we know that any of the elements inside the container will only move the distance of that container rather than the whole distance they're traveling. We'll start at the bottom. We want fitness to collapse and then business and then entertainment. To do that, we'll move Strava to about 0.2 seconds. And then we want that group as a whole to start moving at the same time that the item in the next group is collapsing. So we'll move bottom to about 0.2 seconds as well. And then we'll line up Dropbox with that. So now if I go across the timeline, you can see that the fitness category starts moving at the same time that Dropbox starts collapsing. And then we'll do the same for the entertainment group. Since that group is a little larger, we want to give it more time to collapse. So we'll let that take up the remaining 0.7. And then we'll line up the bottom group to move at the same time that the items in the top are collapsing. So using containers can be a really powerful way to group motion. Even though they were originally kind of created for responsive design, it can allow us to create more complex motion between artboards. This would have normally taken probably three or four separate artboards. Not only are we able to do it between two artboards, but you can see that the motion overlaps. The category will start collapsing before the individual items are collapsing. I will say that this technique gets a little more challenging once things are nested more than a few layers deep, but with just a little bit of tweaking, you can go in and create some really interesting motion transitions. Just by breaking up the timing a bit, we were able to really demonstrate what items belong in what categories, and you can do something similar with the sorting options or with the collapsing of individual items. In the next video, we'll be talking about a similar concept, but applying it to the page transitions as a whole.